What's up guys, Joey here of Ugotech and fresh after releasing the S10 series, it does seem like Samsung is catching up in the mid-range segment. We've all seen and heard good things about the Galaxy M20 and it feels really good to finally get our hands on one. So let's check it out. Now to get things started, the phone has a plastic build but it doesn't exactly feel cheap if you catch my drift. You get a fingerprint scanner and dual 13 plus 5 megapixel cameras at the back as well as an LED flash. It does have some resemblance to the Asus Zenfone Max Pro M2 without the metallic effect, which is funny because the M20 is looking to directly compete with that phone. Up front is a 6.3 inch Infinity V display with a resolution of 2340 by 1080 and a 90% screen to body ratio. Infinity V is just another fancy name for a water drop or dew drop notch, which by the way, marks the first time ever Samsung is getting into the notch game. The notch houses the 8 megapixel front camera, but that aside, I do appreciate the slim side bezels and the small bottom bezel or chin. The screen is sharp and colors pop. However, it's a bummer that we still get Android Oreo with a refreshed Samsung Experience 9.5 instead of Android Pie with One UI because that skin is amazing compared to Samsung Experience and we do hope the M20 gets the Android Pie update soon. On the right are the volume rocker and power button that aren't that hard to reach and are nice and tactile and clicky. On the left is the SIM tray with slots for two nano SIM cards and a designated slot for the micro SD card. Down below, the M20 sports a USB Type-C port. Wait, what? 11,000 peso phone with Type-C? Good job, Samsung. Yeah, we also do have the loudspeaker, microphone, and headphone jack that has Dolby Atmos support. Not too shabby at all. Powering the M20 is the new Exynos 7904 and 32GB of internal storage, which we can expand by up to 512GB via microSD. So far, the Galaxy M20's performance is reliable, it delivers smooth usage but shows some sign of struggle when using too many apps at the same time, perhaps because of the 3GB of RAM. The device runs on an enormous 5000mAh battery, and I don't know about you guys, but the Zenfone Max Pro M2 might just lose its throne as battery king. The the M20 has a couple of advantages here as it supports fast charging thanks to that USB Type-C plus the fact that it's also a few thousand pesos cheaper. As for the cameras, at the back you get a 13 megapixel f1.9 main camera and a 5 megapixel f2.2 wide angle camera and in the front an 8 megapixel f2.0 camera for selfies. So far photos look decent especially under good lighting. Also I like the fact that it has a wide angle lens which can be very useful for landscape or group photo situations. Selfies, on the other hand, I'm not impressed. They're not as sharp as we'd like and they look a little bit washed out. So now, let's talk about price. After two or more confusing price changes in Lazada, the Samsung Galaxy M20 is officially priced at 10,990 pesos for the 3GB RAM 32GB storage variant. You can get it in ocean blue or charcoal black. Considering this, on paper, the Galaxy M20 is one of the most decent, balanced mid-range smartphones available now. I urge you guys to wait for our full review though, but right now, we're already impressed and we can give it a recommendation if you're looking for a great budget to mid-range phone. So, let me know what you guys think about the Samsung Galaxy M20. Leave us a comment down below. If you enjoyed this video, please do drop us a like. Subscribe to our channel for more videos, hit that bell icon so you don't miss any future uploads, and be sure to visit yugatech.com for the latest tech news and reviews. This has been Joey, and I'll see you guys in the next one.